Let's start with, I mean, the premier game in all of D2 this last week. Our game of the week selection. Harding goes into Wachita Baptist, and they get beat. The number one team in the country taken down by number nine, Wachita, 17-13. to I got to watch the whole second half of this one, at least. The environment was incredible. You got the Philly special, or the Tiger special, as they're calling it down there. A big-time touchdown. Harding at the very end of the game. Obviously, that flex bone offense built to sustain long drives. They go in and have to, you know, go down the entire length of the field in one minute. Had some very uncharacteristically not thought-out plays. You see here, this is the last play from our friend Cole Keelan. That one a little bit long. The incompletion would seal the deal for the Bisons, and uh, what a statement win for this Washtenaw team, and I think a lot of people counted them out, not in the way that, you know, they're a top 10 ranked team in the country. They weren't counted out of the whole spiel, but a lot of people counted them out in that they didn't think they could win this game. They didn't think the Tigers could host the number one team in the country and, and take them down on their own field. That's something that I don't think people were really expecting, and the plays from the offense were great for this Watchtaw team. The defense from this Tiger squad were playing out of their mind. You had some great individual performances defensively. Guys like, uh, you look here, Dawson Miller, 16 tackles in the day and a fumble recovery. How about uh, uh, Jarelin Burks, 12 tackles, a TFL. You look down the list, there's a lot of other great individual performances. But as a team, as a group, I think what really stood out to me, that front seven for Wachita, their ability to maintain kind of a, a really just hold Harding. Like you you held Harding down and did not let them eat up that clock and hold the time possession, generated a couple, you know, those big time stops, those turnovers. And I, what it, that boils down to for me, you have two teams that are incredibly familiar with each other. And that's different than Harding going and playing Pittsburgh State or GVSU in the playoffs, right? Or Central Missouri. These are two teams that go at it every single year. This is a Wachita defensive staff and defensive group that knows exactly what to expect from this Harding squad. It's probably been game planning for that multiple years. This is a, a game and a kind of a budding rivalry, although Wachita and Henderson obviously have the kind of the battle down there. But um, this is a game and budding rivalry where these teams know exactly what to expect from each other. And I think that was the, the key point for this Watchtaw team. They knew exactly what they were getting into, and defensively, they stepped up to the task. It was an incredible performance uh, from a team that certainly deserved that big-time win, and uh, I do have to shout out the guys on the broadcast, too. It was one of the best, uh, most fun games to listen to. That environment, second to none down there in Arkadelphia. Almost 6,000 watching the game live on YouTube with me. That is crazy. Oh, my goodness. Um, but, yeah, another cliff note for Harding. You look at their offense. Certainly not built for the late game heroics. Harding does not have a two minute drill kind of built into that that scheme down there. They made some boneheaded mistakes in that final drive, which is uncharacteristic of them. And you know, I'm not saying change your game plan and just you know, abandon the flex bone after one loss after 26 in your 26th game. You won the last 25. But what I am saying is, you know, if you're Harding, there's going to be some other really good teams down the line. You're going to be playing in the postseason if you're Harding for sure. And there's probably going to be another moment that. Harding needs to have some late game heroics where there's, you know, less than two minutes on the clock. So now this might be a really great learning experience for this Bisons team up there in Searcy that they can go and game plan and have some things prepared for that moment that you're not scrapping and totally twitching up the offense or, you know, throwing away all this foundation you have, but adding a wrinkle or two, you know, to a fact where you could actually make something happen in these points because their offense just certainly did not get it done. They're running, running a one man route with, you know, 40 seconds left in the game. And it, Braden Jay, who is obviously a great playmaker, you could put anyone out there. They're not going into quadruple coverage and pulling down a ball. So it could be a great learning moment for this Harding team.